Welcome to Box Recaps. Today I'm going to explain the movie Sharper, released in the year 2023. The movie starts and we see a man named Tom has an old bookshop. That day, a young student of PhD named Sandra goes on to enter the shop as she wants to find a perfect book as a birthday gift for her professor. The two talk about books for a while and Tom finds Sandra attractive. When she's about to leave, he goes on to ask her out on a date but she turns him down, saying she does not like getting involved with anyone. When she's about to pay, her card does not work, and Tom is still kind enough to let her go with the book, adding that she can pay whenever she likes. Later that evening, she makes her way to Tom's store and pays him for the book. She's impressed by the gesture he made earlier, so she decides to go on a date with him. He takes her to a Japanese restaurant, and as they talk, we learn that Tom actually used to be a writer, but he lost him, and that sent him into depression, which is why he has not been able to write since then. She then goes on to tell him that she too has had a hard life, because she lost her parents pretty early when she was just a very young girl, and after that, she was sent from one family to another as a foster child. She reveals that she once read Jane Eyre, which made her fall in love with books, and since then, she has just been a bookworm. Both of them start enjoying each other's company because both of them just love books. The next thing we know, they're in a relationship and things are going great. One night they're at his place when there's constant knocking at the door. It turns out to be Sandra's brother named Jason who needs money right away because he's being threatened by some guy from whom he took drugs and he now owes him money. She then goes on to reveal to Tom that her brother was not always like this. He is like this because of the different families he lived with. Some of those families were just a nightmare for him. Tom, however, does not make much of it and goes on to tell Sandra that he understands how a person can end up like this. They keep dating each other just like that and Tom is always nice to her. He always comforts her whenever she needs him. One night, when both of them are hanging out at his place, he goes on to reveal to her that he does not like his father and his father too does not like him because he thinks that Tom is a useless man who is no good to anyone. On top of that, after Tom's mother died, his father got married again to another woman, and that has created an even bigger rift between these two. Things are going well between these two, and then one night, Tom makes his way to Sandra's place when he finds her in her bedroom, and she does not look good. He asks her what's wrong, and she reveals that her brother was recently beaten up very brutally by the thugs whom he owes money to. They have told him that if he does not return their money within the next four days, they're going to come back and kill him. He owes them a big amount, which is $350,000, and they do not have that kind of money right now. Sandra goes on to say that they cannot pay them off, but Tom thinks that the only way to stop those guys is to pay them off, or else they're just going to finish her brother off. Tom then goes on to tell her that there's a big amount of money in his dad's bank account, adding that he can help her out, but Sandra, of course, does not want his money. She says that they've barely known each other three weeks, so she cannot really accept his money, as in many ways, he's still a stranger to her. He, however, tells her that despite the fact that they've not known each other for too long, he still loves her the most and would do anything to protect her. Having no other choice, she decides to take the money from him, but does tell him that she's going to pay him back, but has no idea how and when. The next day, she makes her way out to take the money to her brother and tells Tom that she's going to see him for dinner. He waits for her, but she does not show up. He goes to her place to check in on her, but the girl is nowhere to be found. He is devastated. The scene then changes to a bar, where we see Sandra, it is before the time she met Tom for the first time, she's with her parole officer. We learn that this nerdy looking girl is actually a big criminal and is on parole right now. The officer goes on to ask her what she has been up to. She tells the officer that she's been working at Starbucks, but the officer reveals that she already knows that she was fired from that job a month ago. The officer then tells her that she has no choice but to arrest her because getting fired from the job gets you in trouble when you're on parole. In her defense, Sandra goes on to tell the officer that she smoked weed the night before the job, but that does not make the case any stronger for her. Just as she's about to be taken away by the officer, a man named Max goes on to approach her and tells her to let the girl go. 
He, in turn, offers the officer his Rolex and $400 in cash, too. The officer, however, tells him to go away, adding that she does not take bribes. When the man leaves, the lady officer realizes that she has made a big mistake in hurry because the amount that man was offering was a big one. The officer right away goes on to follow Max when he's about to get into his car. She tells him to come back in the bar and have a chat with her. After the chat, it is decided that she is going to keep the Rolex and let go of Sandra. Sandra, however, has no idea what is going on and why Max wants to save her. Sandra then asks him why Max helped her, and he tells her that the Rolex he gave to the lady officer was a fake one. He then takes her to his own apartment and tells her that she's allowed to stay in this nice apartment if she's willing to work for him. When she wakes up the next morning, he goes on to make her breakfast, and as they talk, he starts talking about movies, and he keeps talking about Titanic, making it clear that he loves it. It turns out he does not watch any movies whatsoever. He then tells her that this is the job they're going to be doing. He reveals that they're going to lure the people in to take money from them by getting into a relationship with them, after pretending that they have a lot of things in common. Max reveals that he himself is going to conduct the research on the target, and Sandra will be getting in from then on. He then goes on to notice that Sandra is not what he thinks she was. He notices that she is always smoking weed, and she does not focus on the mission at all. He then goes on to tell her that he does not need her, adding that there is no way she's going to be able to do what she wants her to do. Max then goes on to beg her to be a part of this mission because she really has nowhere else to go. He then tells her she can keep working with him if she promises that she is not going to smoke weed now. She agrees and he tells her that they are going to start training the next day. The next day is a hectic one for Sandra because she has now started working on preparing for Tom. She starts memorizing quotes of Tom's favorite books, the name of many books and their authors because she has to pretend to be a nerd for him to trust her. It is not as easy as it sounds because she really has to change her whole lifestyle despite the fact that she is just pretending to be a nerd. We then learn that it was just lies. All that she told Tom was just a big fat lie. Max goes on to make her go through very difficult types of learning as well. He makes her play different games, makes her cram even the things she has to say when she's in the act. He goes on to teach her how she's going to win his heart. When he thinks that she is trained enough, he takes her out to dinner one night and goes on to tell her to seduce a man sitting on the table next to theirs. She herself has now gotten really good at it. She goes on to make it easy for her. The next thing we know, she has seduced the man and they're on their way to his room. Just as they're about to have a hormone sandwich, Max breaks the door of that man and goes on to create a proper scene as he pretends to be Sandra's boyfriend and shouts at her for being infidel towards him. Sandra then tells that man that she's going to need a few minutes to talk to Max to calm him down. The man then walks out of his own place and gives the two time to talk. Max gets back to his real self and right away starts sweeping the place. He takes all the valuables from the apartment. He then tells Sandra that she has done a really good job and that she is now ready to catch a bigger fish. The scene then changes to the day before Max met Sandra. Max is going to a lavish apartment owned by his mother named Madeline, and we learn that she has married a rich man named Richard. Max goes there and creates a scene. He keeps calling Richard old, and the next thing we see, he's requesting his mother to let him stay at their apartment for a while. When Max's mother and Richard come back, they find a cop there, and Max is being arrested. But Richard wants to help Max because he genuinely cares for his mother and cannot see Madeline sad. When Richard is about to pay the police officer, Max's mother realizes that Max is actually playing a trick. The man standing in front of them is a fake cop who has been hired by Max. Madeline goes on to slap her son and tells him to get out of there. Max's mother, however, comes to see him the next day and we learn that Madeline is not actually his mother. She is his girlfriend, and she is just playing tricks on Richard to get her hands on the money. She tells Max that Richard wants to see him because he wants to get along with him, and when Max is there, he sees Tom. We learn that Tom is actually the rich Richard's son. Richard tells Max that Tom is a disappointment because he does not take any interest in the business, he then tells Max to keep $60,000 every month from him and never show his face again. 
Max then calls Madeline and tells her that they have to leave the city right away. But Madeline says that she has won Richard's heart, so she does not need to leave as she has access to his unlimited wealth now. Richard dies after a while and leaves Madeline $9.2 million and many other things. He has not left anything for Tom except for the bookstore he owns. She wins Tom's trust as well and Madeline is thrilled about that too. Madeline has now been living like the wealthy lady that she is. We are now back to the present where Tom has decided to take help from a man named Braddock in the case of Sandra. His men manage to track her down, and they tell Tom that she was not working alone, but when she got the money from Tom, her accomplice betrayed her and she left her with nothing. Tom says that he does not want the money. The only thing he wants is to meet Sandra. Tom goes on to tell her everything to Madeline, whom he has started trusting. He also tells her that he's going to keep Sandra at their place for a few days, but Madeline does not like this idea. Madeline goes to see Sandra, who reveals that she already knows everything about Madeline. She threatens to tell Tom about who Madeline really is, but Madeline makes a deal with her as she tells her that she can get her to Max, the guy who betrayed Sandra. Madeline calls Max and arranges a meeting. She takes Sandra with her, who is furious when she sees Tom, because this is the guy who betrayed her. When they're there, they're approached by Tom and his men, who now know that these three have actually been working together, or at least they have a connection. Tom gets pissed when Madeline tells him that he cannot do anything about it, because she now owns everything. Tom is about to shoot her when Sandra shoves the gun out of his hand, but Madeline gets the gun. Tom then goes on to grab the gun in Madeline's hand, and he is shot dead right away. Tom's men are about to tell the police the whole truth behind everything, but she right away goes on to transfer all the money to Richard's foundation and makes her way out of there. We then see Sandra, Max, and Madeline getting on a plane, and Madeline tells Max that she will eventually get all that money back. Sandra says that she is disgusted by them, because Tom is dead, and they're still talking about money. She goes to the bathroom, and Max notices that the blood on Madeline's shirt is not real, which means she was tricked. Tom is still alive. Max then realizes that Sandra has been in the bathroom for a while, and when Madeline goes to check, Sandra is already gone. The scene then changes to the last part of the movie, where we learn that Sandra actually fell in love with Tom, and she told Tom everything about Max and Madeline when Richard died, and this is when Tom took the help of Braddock and the other boys. It was all planned. Tom now has his money, and his bookstore, and Sandra of course. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.